Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And um, I, I think I've encountered evidence that Dungeons and Dragons is a war against death. All right, let's let's talk about it. All right, so um, I had a I had a pretty traumatic event happen in my life recently, and that was the death of a leopard gecko who was a pet of the Garibays. Uh, his name was Jojo, and he died, um, and it made me very sad. Uh, um, I'm still processing it now, um, and it was it was a kind of a deep impact for my life. It made me very very upset, um, and yeah, it, it brought a lot of sadness. Right, so um, the moment I got kind of got past the initial you know uh, process of realizing that you know there's one less Garibay now, um, uh, which yeah, it's, I don't know, I, maybe you guys have experienced the loss of a pet, but it's, it's very, um, I feel it's very impacting, it's, it's very significant, and I think the significance of the death of, of the death of a pet is only growing in American society, uh, I think it's hitting people harder and harder, uh, than it did even a year or two ago, and certainly more than five or ten years, because Americans are really ramping up the importance of, um, of pets in our lives. All right, so, um, but as soon as this happened, you know, you know, like 48 hours passes and uh, immediately my head's like, well, what's this mean for Dungeons and Dragons? Because Dungeons and Dragons is, Dungeons and Dragons is the fourth most important thing in my life. It's just really, really high priority wise, right? And, and I really don't process anything of significance in my life without bringing it through the, um, the element of Dungeons and Dragons because Dungeons and Dragons is so central to my life, right? So, um... So I was like, okay, so, you know, I'm processing this death, but I, I deal with death in Dungeons and Dragons, right? I, through the death of player characters, right? And as far as, actually, of course, you know, I run, I run dun, as a dungeon master. By the way, we should talk about this. The death of non-player characters is fairly is insignificant, right? Uh, it happens quite a bit in Dungeons and Dragons. And, and so what everything I'm talking about here does not pertain to how a dungeon master would process the death of a non-player character. But the way a player who had invested time, passion, energy, and attention into a player character, this is very real, right? Like you, you can, you could definitely feel deeply the loss of a um, of a player character, and I have Barrel, uh, Barrel, my total wizard, um, folk hero is deeply, uh, you know, I'm still processing that, and that's about a year old now, and uh, it was it was a loss, certainly. Question. I did have to think which one of those was more upsetting to me. Well, I don't... The loss of a pet or the loss of a player character. Right now, the loss of the pet is far more sharp, right? Although I've dealt with the loss of the player character for a long time, for a much longer time, right? All right, so... So, once I started thinking about death, I was like, okay, well, so how did dealing with the death of a player character help me to deal with the death of a pet? Right? Did it did it deal with it? And w what I really came to immediately was like, well, I'm thinking about this from a death of a pet, but how have I processed the death of family or friends? Right? And then I realized I haven't. I haven't dealt with I haven't lost I haven't really dealt with the loss of family or friends in like five years. Right? Like I have not been I don't think I've been to a funeral in easily five years, right? And, um, and yeah, in, in a very, very long time, maybe 10, right? And I was like, wow, that's kind of odd. That seems odd, right? How come I'm not encountering death in my real life, right? Because I'm 52 years old, right? I'm, I'm, I, by the way, I'm an old, like I recently you know, referred to somebody as old in the, in my comments who was, you know, we were talking about, uh, specifically behaviors attached to age. I'm an old man. I, I am 52 years old. I got less life ahead of me than I do behind me. You know, like I'm getting close to being a full on legitimate senior citizen, but the idea that I'm an old man is not, that seems very appropriate. So if I'm 52 years old, I'm like, I should be experiencing death, right? For friends and family. There should be some of that happening, right? Uh, but it's not. Right? And legitimate, I can't even remember the last funeral I went to, 
right? It's really been a long time, right? And I was like, wait a second, why is that? Why have, am I not experiencing the death of families or friends, you know, of families or my friend, of any of my family or any of my friends, right? It seems very odd, right? And, um, and I, I have, I've come to this conclusion and I'm going to present this conclusion today and I think this is the reason and then you can tell me if you think that's right or wrong, all right? I think Duns, Duns and Dragons, engaging with Duns and Dragons at a deep level wards you from death. All right, now, I know that's a bold claim, so let me back it up with some evidence. All right, so, all right, uh, yeah, so here we go. Okay, so first of all, it is my humble opinion that uh, Dungeons and Dragons is powerfully, powerfully self-selecting for, um, yeah, that the Dungeons and Dragons is powerfully self-selecting for highly educated, highly literate people. And here's why. So, um, I don't, you know, yeah, you can buy an essentials box and run a campaign or two, right? Okay. Uh, and, and then bounce out happens all the time, right? Did you play Dungeons and Dragons? I don't know. I don't think you did. I think you rubbed your face on Dungeons and Dragons and walked away. Fine. Everybody has that right, right? But the reality is if you, if you get the essentials kit, you run it, Right, and then you get excited, you get the DMG, the PHB, and the MM. You just walk through the first gate, the combat gate, right? And uh, and you're going to encounter the interaction that's in the game. And then you will not encounter exploration till later, but you've encountered two of the pillars of Dungeons and Dragons. You all in now, baby. Like, you're, you're in, okay? And here's the kicker. Um, that's 750 pages of content, right? That right there you got to be highly literate and highly educated, right? And at, at the macro level, I do there. I know for a fact, I got them in my comments below. I have people who do not have college degrees who play Dungeons and Dragons, but it is my powerful opinion that, uh, the mat at the macro level, the, you know, the, the 51% level, I don't think there's a lot of people without uh, college degrees playing Dungeons and Dragons because the, the ante is too high. The ante, like they're like, Hey, Want to play this game? It starts at 750 pages of reading. And guess what? There are 40 books. 40 books. Now, at 250 pages of book, uh, in just 5th edition alone, that's 750 to 10,000 pages of reading. It, this is a no-brainer. You, you just don't get highly. You don't get people who aren't highly literate and highly educated. Highly literate or highly educated in Dungeons & Dragons. And frankly, at the macro level, I think they're highly educated and highly li and highly literate. And the people I follow on uh, on Twitter that are deep, like Teos Abadia, Sean Merwin, uh, Sly Flourish, um, you know, AJ Pickett, uh, uh, Jorf, Jorf Dan, Jorfden, I think the PH is silent, whatever. Um, you know, uh, level th level three to XP. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, ben Quest, Ben at Questing Beast, degree, 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 degree. And the only question is degree or degree. You know, like, is there just a bachelor's or is there a bachelor's, a master's? I got a bachelor's and a master's. Or is there, is there a bachelor's, a master's, and a doctorate? Right? You know, so... Dungeons and Dragons is self-selecting for highly literate, highly educated people, right? So one of the things I realized recently, I'm not, I'm saying this is a fact. I'm not saying this is, I'm saying this is what is, not what should be. It's just the shape of my life. I recently ended a friendship, right? And the reason, and, and I, I realized very powerfully, uh, so I ended a friendship. And the reason why is, not everybody does this, but this is a Scott Garibay thing. If I'm a friend to you, that commits me to something very significant. Um, and, and frankly, you know, like if you are in trouble or if you, and I've had to do this with some friends, certainly not all, right? But like they get jammed up. I can end up spending months of my time, hundreds or thousands of my dollars, um, you know, blood, sweat, and tears to get you out of a jam, right? And and if you're my friend, I'm going to do that, right? It, it doesn't mean it's going to happen with every friend, but it has happened, right? And so I don't just keep friends around, right? If if, if we're not friends, 
I'm going to tell you that at some point and say, we're no longer friends. And the reason why is I don't want to be in a situation where I need to help you. And friends don't ask me for help. I, I look over and I go, oh my gosh, your life is completely out of control. What can I do? And when I say, what can I do? I mean it. Like, I'm like, yeah, okay, here's money, here's time, here's resources, you know, and I don't put a lot of limits on that, right? So I don't just keep friends lying around, right? Like, and we then become associates. We know, you know, so, and, and I recently ended a friendship because this guy I was spending time with, we would spend time and I, and we were spending time in a way that I did not like, or I was like, I don't like what we're doing here. This is not fun for me in any way. So I was like, Hey, I'm not enjoying this friendship because we're spending a lot of time doing stuff I don't like. Right. And this guy did not play Dungeons and Dragons. Right. And so it goes further. Right. And this just happened recently with like within the last year. And it really made me think about all of the shape of all of this and how I'm, I have this growing opinion that Dungeons and Dragons is a ward against death. Right. So here we go. So, I get, I get, and I tell this guy, I don't like spending time like this. Can we start doing something different? Now, I knew he didn't play D&D. That's what I wanted to do, right? And I could have swept him into my group, or I could have run a one by one, uh, you know, a one, we could have done a one by one. You run something, I run something. I would love, I was like, I really want, this guy was brilliant. And I really, but actually he had no degree, which is kind of interesting. Um, and it was, you know, and I was, I was like, okay, I get it. You don't play D&D, but can we start playing? You know, I got some, uh, you know, 1v1 uh, board games or can we start going to the movies or we did go to the movies. He fell asleep. Well, I was like in the Batman. I'm like, mm, dude, man, you're really making this, this uh, friendship hard. And so we could, we never got there. And, and I realized this guy wanted to do a bunch of things that I did not find were fun at all. Right. And he didn't want to play board games and he want to play D and D. So I, so I got to the point where I was like, Oh my gosh. And this guy, this isn't a joke. He was a literal rock star. He had spent 10 years of his life touring with a band. I'm not going to name it because I don't want to call this guy out. And uh, and then exactly what happens with every with not every rock star, but the majority of rock stars, he had an addiction and then he came out of that addiction and he fixed it and you know and then and he had like another 10 years sober, right? But this guy was, you know, it it I was like, "Wait a second. I'm ending my friendship with this guy." He does not have a degree. He does not play D&D. And he is probably the most likely person that I know who would die. Right? Because like, like, one of the things I've read is that if you have like a 10-year uh, addiction that you... And we've se- I've seen this in the church. Right? You know, the, the people who have the cool, hey, you know, I went to prison testimony. And then they die early. They die at like 50 or 40 or 60. Right? Like, and then we got other people who never had any addiction problems living to 90 and 100. Right? Like... It's, it's a thing. Like if you spend 10 years in addiction, that can easily take five, 10, 15 years off your life, shorten your life. Right. So this guy was high probability that I'd be going to his funeral at some point. Right. And so, but I nixed it. I came, I was like, Hey, we've been spending time for months and this is done. I don't want to be your friend anymore, which is terrible. I, that's not what you should do, but I, I'm like, I'm not going to be on the hook for you. I just, you know, I just don't like you enough for this. And every time it comes to spend time with you, it's terrible. And I dislike it. Right. And as soon as I thought about this, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm crafting every friendship I have around Dungeons and Dragons. And if you don't play Dungeons and Dragons, you do not have a high probability of remaining my friend, which means that my, the only friends I have are highly literate and highly educated. Right. Which means they die less than people and if you're highly literate and highly educated, you have a good job. You can get all the resources you need to get the medical attention you need. You can buy whatever you need as far as, you know, care. And you're much likely to live longer. And also because you're highly literate and highly educated, you read all these authors who are like, here's how to fix this problem. And so you die less, right? So not only do we live longer if we play Dungeons and Dragons and surround ourselves with Dungeons and Dragons, but the people that we are closest to that's the case as well. In my humble opinion, Dungeons and Dragons is a ward against death. What's your opinion? I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.